I'm here at Saratoga Spa Golf Course in Saratoga, New York. It's a beautiful course I found last year and I've played about 10 or 15 times. I played the white tees to just relax and have a good time. I think it's important to have a goal for my round each day, and today for me, that's to break 40. To do that, I need to keep the ball in play, which is why I'm hitting an iron off this tee. That and because I wasn't able to warm up. Secondly, I need to make sure when I miss greens, I give myself makeable up and downs. This will be the hardest part since I haven't played all winter except for a handful of rounds last month in Florida. Lastly, and least important, I need to capitalize on chances to get birdies. I say this is least important because going for birdies is not necessary for me to break 40 at a course of this length. However, because the par fives are short, I want to give myself the opportunity to make back a stroke or two for the inevitable bogeys to come. At 185 yards, I would normally take a 6-iron, but I'm a little downhill and I know this shot plays less than the number. However, I should have accounted for the cold weather and the fact that I was not warmed up. I didn't get a good strike on it, but it is still much better to be short of the screen with an uphill chip, rather than being long with a potentially nasty putt down the hill. I left myself with an awkward 15-yard chip or so to a green that I didn't know the speed of. I probably could have left myself a little closer than I did, but at least I gave myself a putt for par. At 145 yards, even into the wind, a 9-iron should have been more than enough to reach the screen. Usually, I can easily reach it with a pitching wedge, but I'm still not striking the ball super well. My swing plane is very shallow these days, which is an issue I've always had, but it got especially bad last year. It's something I'm actively thinking about and working on this round. Not much to say here. The bunker is ridiculously hard, and I used my 58 degree wedge, which has a very high bounce. The club skipped right off the sand. Luckily, I was somewhat expecting this to happen, so I ended up on the back of the green with a putt. I couldn't help myself. It's the first drive of the day, and I love this hole. Despite knowing I can easily reach it in two, I tried to kill it, and uh, I hooked it a little bit. At 230 yards in the rough, into the wind, with water in front of you, most people are probably laying up. However, nobody watches YouTube videos for layups. On a more serious note, with my longer clubs, I have a bit of a natural draw, and I had a good lie despite being in the rough. I felt confident I could easily carry the ball 200 yards even with a miss hit, which is more than enough to clear the water. To me personally, I'd rather go for the green and miss than have a nasty wedge shot in from about 100 yards. But that isn't true for everyone. You have to play to your strengths. The water isn't even on my mind in this shot, which means I could fully commit to going for the green. And it paid off. First round of the year, and I get a short putt for eagle. I wish I could say I pushed the putt, but I really didn't think with how slow the greens were that it would break in any meaningful way if I hit it with enough pace on it. After hitting it fat off the tee, I left myself pretty far from the hole. I hit a 6-iron just left of the green. I know it's often better on this green, the hardest one on the course, to miss it left rather than be right or above the hole even if I was on the green. While I don't play to miss the green, I definitely aim left of center. My short game saved me a par here. This hole really goes to show you how important chipping is. 
Even with a bad drive and not so great approach, a good ship is sometimes all you need to recover. While I'm blocked behind a tree after that drive, I know I have a punch shot in my repertoire. Shots like these are all feel and come more from experience than any technical skill, at least to me. I just put the ball in the back of my stance, deal off the club with my hands, and focus on making solid contact. While I don't hit a great shot, again, it's still early in the year. I was able to get myself in a position to up and down. I'm not a pro, so I know I'm not going to make every putt. Saving a bogey felt pretty good here. So far, this has easily been my best drive of the day. Well, I definitely didn't get all of it, it stayed mostly straight and I'm in a position to go for another par 5 and 2. Thank you. Again, I find myself outside the range of my 4-iron. I've been hitting my 2-iron pretty well so far today, so I decided to go for it. I'm not really afraid of being in either of those greenside bunkers, so I don't see a reason to lay up. Despite not hitting a perfect shot, I'm still greenside under regulation. I remember from the second hole how hard the bunkers are, so I decided to use my 54 because it has less bounce than my 58. As an amateur golfer who works and has limited access to practice facilities, I don't practice my 54 from side bunkers ever, so I just wanted it on the green. Sometimes you make a putt and get a little lucky. Two birdies in one day is always a score helper. The wind is picking up and it's starting to get colder. I made a terrible strike and was really lucky to put it near the green. I'm a big fan of the bump and run whenever possible, especially after a poor strike. By chipping with an 8 iron, I know I'm much less likely to chunk or blade my chip. Additionally, with how wet the green is, I know I can attack the pin hard. Despite leaving it a little short, I made the putt for par. This is the swing I finally connected with it. Of course it happens on the last hole. My swing plane felt much better than early in the round and I absolutely crushed this drive. This is as far as I can hit it. Okay. 
Unfortunately, my wedge game is still on winter break, and I was lucky to keep this in bounds. Sometimes we just have to roll with the bad shots and be glad they aren't worse. I still use my time walking to the green to forget how I screwed up an easy sand wedge and focus on up and downing. I'm not sure if pointing the camera at near the green was more helpful here. I had a nasty chip up from behind the back of the green. All I was focused on was the ball flight. I wanted to land it about halfway to the hole with a high lofted club and let it roll to hopefully 10 or so feet. This was a really hard shot and I had already accepted the likelihood of a bogey. I just wanted to prevent a double and do damage control. Maybe later in the year I try and flop it close, but it's all about simple controlled golf today, especially around the green. After missing the putt, I finished today with a 38. While that sounds and is really good, I accomplished my goal after all, the tees I played from significantly helped my score. I was able to go for both par 5s and 2 and was hitting at par 3s and 4s with short irons. My distance from these tees helped me to make back some mistakes that short game practice would have prevented in the first place. While my distance is one of my biggest assets, I do believe a player with a better short game and 40 yards less of distance would have been under par from these tees with my handicap. At the beginning of the video, I talked about my goal of breaking 40 for the round. For this season, I really want to shoot under par for 18 holes. I don't really care how easy or hard the course is, I just want to do it. As a secondary goal, I want to get my handicap down from a 3.8 to under 3. This is probably unrealistic as I don't have the kind of time required to practice to get there, but it's a goal nonetheless. As I progress this year, I really plan on drilling my medium length putts and my wedges to achieve my goals. I will of course continue to work on my swing plane as well, but my short game is what's preventing me from scoring, not the occasional miss hit with my irons or driver. Thanks for watching, and as always, any comments, questions, or suggestions are greatly appreciated.